Welcome to your Daily Dose of Sunday School, episode 156. We are continuing to look at the 10th commandment. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. We are looking at it through question 80 of the Westminster Shorter Catechism. What is required in the 10th commandment? The 10th commandment requires full contentment with our own condition, with a right and charitable frame of spirit toward our neighbor and all that is his. So we're focusing on the um, attitude that we should have towards our neighbor. And the proof text for this is Romans 12, 15, which is a really excellent one. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. So this is one of the ways that love is summarized in the scripture. If I love someone, I have, I have a disposition towards their good. Right? Love, love, will not, uh, love does not envy, right? 1 Corinthians 13. So love and covetousness are opposite. Remember the law is a summary of what? Well, the law is an explanation of what love looks like in many different situations. And so covetousness and love are the opposite. Because love rejoices with those who rejoice. Uh, if um, If I weep, if I am upset at the success of others then I am weeping with those who rejoice, and that means I hate them. Even if I was raised not to say I hate somebody, well, I don't really hate him, I just really, really, really dislike him. No, if you take pleasure in their destruction, and, or if you are sorrowful at their, um, the good things in their life, then you hate them. So, oh, we have to have such a disposition towards the good of our neighbor that seeing them happy and satisfied uh, is something that makes us happy. Uh, let's see. So... Of course, we have to keep in mind that sometimes they might be happy, or they might be rejoicing in things that are very temporary. Uh, they might be, if they're rejoicing in sin, they're going to have very fleeting pleasure. And even if it happened to be long lasting pleasure, in a hundred years, they're going to be very sorrowful, sorrowful, and for in for endless years after that they'll be sorrowful um, for that one thing they took pleasure in so we can't be uh, love someone by rejoicing when they rejoice in sin Uh, instead we rejoice when they repent even someone who would be classified as our enemy Uh, Even someone who we, in some sense, might... I mean, there's different situations in life where you might find yourself opposed to someone. You still ultimately want them to find joy in the ultimate thing, which is in knowing Jesus Christ. And the ultimate example of this this proper concern for neighbor is obviously in Jesus, so that's true for any other commandment. It's true of this one. uh, Hebrews 12, 2 says, Affix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. That's the NIV. Um, Author and finisher of our faith, right? Um, For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So, um, the joy set before him was not just his own joy at 
receiving his inheritance, um, completing the task from his father, but the joy that we would share with him. And so, um, you know, he became, Philippians 2, um, he became a servant. And um, so we want to have that mindset where we are seeking the good of our neighbor. What did it say? We have a right and charitable. We show that love, that disposition uh, to do good towards our neighbor and all that is his. We're not, they can be as rich as they want to, but we're so satisfied in Jesus that that does not cause us any sort of bitterness uh, towards that person. We are, if you're satisfi satisfied in Jesus, then you couldn't care less about trying to even the playing field regarding money, because that's not our treasure anyway.